how they get you. They're under the goddamn ground. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 sand monsters. For this list, we're looking at the most fearsome fictional beasts that lurk beneath or swim through sand and soil. So just out living in the desert, for example, or being made out of sand isn't enough to make the list. Do you have worm sign? You should probably get that checked. But tell us what your favorite sand monster is in the comments. Who should we have worm sign the likes of which even God has never seen? Number 10, Wereworms, the Middle Earth franchise. J.R.R. Tolkien mentioned these monsters only briefly in his 1937 novel The Hobbit, but that was enough to inspire nail-biting appearances in other media. In the novel, Bilbo boasts that he would, quote, walk from here to the east of east and fight the wild wereworms in the last desert. Worms might really refer to dragons here, but in the 2003 game The Hobbit, they appeared as blind caterpillar-like creatures. <laughs> By Peter Jackson's 2014 film, The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, they had grown quite a bit. Oh, come on! The colossal beasts are enlisted to chew paths for Azog's orc army. Thankfully, they don't join the fray, but they will happily hunt you down in the desolation of Mordor, an expansion for Middle-earth Shadow of War. Number 9. The Karthus Sandworm, Dark Souls 3 This formidable foe resides in the smoldering lake, burrowing through the hot sand inside the catacombs of Karthus. It's an inhospitable environment, but the Karthus Sandworm seems right at home. Long ago, the sandworm attacked the kingdom above, but was forced down into the catacombs by the ghostly Grave Wardens. Covered in a stony shell, it has natural armor and is quick on the attack too, swimming through the soil to strike or firing from afar with a lightning blast from its mouth. Perhaps most horrifyingly of all, when you look really closely, it seems to be made of people. You gotta tell them, Silent Green is people! Number 8. Muldugas, Zelda, Breath of the Wild The Legend of Zelda franchise has more than its fair share of memorable subterranean burrowers. Majora's Mask featured Twin Mold, a creature able to traverse both sand and sky. In The Wind Waker, there was Mulgara and its pesky larvae. But for scale and distinct design, Breath of the Wild's Muldugas take the cake. These four-legged, fish-like leviathans patrol the Gerudo Desert, listening for prey on the surface. The Champion's Ballad DLC unveiled an even larger subspecies that hibernates for centuries, storing up energy. The Iron-Skinned Muldu King. Number 7. The Purple Worm – Dungeons and Dragons when it comes to this desert denizen, the sting is in the tail. No, really, this iconic D&D monster has two attacks, one from the uh, head end in the form of a vicious bite, and the other from the tail, which ends in a venom-infused stinger. Endemic to the Callum Desert, where they reside in groups, they can move through sand, but also chew through rock, creating new tunnels through the Underdark. This allows them to pop their vicious heads up in a variety of environments. Purple worms are distant cousins of thunder herders, which are less aggressive but travel in massive herds of up to 30 individuals. Yeah, you probably want to get out of the way. I thought you said this was going to be easy. No, I said it wasn't impossible. Number 6. Jen Moran, the Monster Hunter franchise. You might think of deserts as vast and empty. Well, they are vast, but in the Monster Hunter games at least, they are far from empty. Monsters swimming through the shifting sands include the sneaky Nibblesnarf, the streamlined Cephalos, and of course, the Diablos.
but it's the Chen Moran that inspires the most awe. This majestic elder dragon roams the Great Desert, diving in and out of the dunes. It's armed with two tusks for smashing obstacles and foes. Subspecies include the violet hallowed Chen Moran and the even more gigantic single tusked Daren Moran. Despite appearances, they're actually fairly docile creatures, unless a dragon ship gets too close. Number 5. The Sarlacc, the Star Wars franchise. <laughs> sci fi fans love a good desert planet, and Star Wars does not disappoint. On Jakku, the list of hazards includes the Night Watcher Worm, which watches over the sand with a head like a periscope waiting to rear out and catch dinner. BB 8, this way! <laughs> But the franchise's most iconic, if not most mobile, desert monster is the Sarlacc in the Dune Sea of Tatooine. As infants, Sarlaccs are relatively small and fast, but upon reaching adulthood at 30,000 years old, they work their way down into the sand, becoming sedentary pits of doom. Doesn't sound so bad. In his belly, you will find a new definition of pain and suffering. Perhaps most horrifying is the way they inject victims with painful, paralyzing neurotoxins and digest them slowly over millennia. If you're a long lived species, that would especially suck. Number 4. Phalanx, Shadow of the Colossus. Wander faces off against a few desert colossi in Team Eco's action adventure game. One of the most at home in the sand is Dirge, a serpentine monster with incredibly creepy eyes. But we had to give this entry to the Forbidden Land's largest colossus, Phalanx, who spends more time in the air during combat, but seems to dwell underground until disturbed. The truly gargantuan beast erupts from the desert at Wander's arrival, soaring through the air thanks to inflatable bladders on its underside. It dives back down below the surface to recover from attacks, sliding beneath the dunes. Unlike other colossi, it's actually pretty non-aggressive, making us feel kind of bad for, you know, murdering it. Number 3. Graboids, the Tremors franchise. Must be a million of them! Nope, just one. Around the isolated settlement of Perfection, Nevada, hidden monsters lurk, snaking through the sand. There are actually several species of graboids around the world the American, Arctic, and African varieties. <laughs> When they sense vibrations overhead, they burrow faster than Bugs Bunny through the topsoil to grab onto victims, using a trio of prehensile tongues. One of their most remarkable features, though, is an incredibly elaborate, highly implausible yet entertaining life cycle. Hatching from eggs as dirt dragons, they grow into graboids before transforming into shriekers, which emerge from cocoons as ass blasters. What's it doing now? What the? Ass blasters lay eggs, starting the cycle anew. Wow, life really does find a way. Number 2. The Greater Crate Dragon, the Star Wars franchise. <laughs> this reptilian predator was first glimpsed in A New Hope in skeletal form. According to the radio dramatization, it's a crate dragon's call that Obi Wan mimics to scare off the Tusken Raiders. But we had to wait for The Mandalorian's second season to see one in live action. And you know what? Worth the wait it was. There are actually two subspecies, both native to Tatooine the four legged canyon crate dragon and the immense ten legged greater crate dragon. The greater crate dragon speeds through the sand, chomping up Jawas, Banthas, and even Sarlaccs. It can also spit corrosive acid. They are considered valuable for the pearls that form inside their stomachs, but good luck getting to them. Me. 
Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Ashworms, Darksiders, Abyssal Creatures of the Ashlands. Sandworms, Borderlands 2. These pesky creatures infest dry seabeds. How hilarious! You just set off my trap card. Bawa Bawa, Bleach. This eager spirit just wants to be included. Oh no! Bawa Bawa is crying! It's alright, Bawa Bawa. We haven't forgotten about you. Bloodworms, Fallout 4. These mutant monsters are highly territorial. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sandworms, the Dune franchise. It is the legend. Herbert's mighty Shai Hulud inspired many of the others on this list. Dune's sandworms are not only physically awe-inspiring, they are crucial to the story. And have a fascinating life cycle. Sandworms begin life on Arrakis as sand plankton, which grow into sand trout. The excretions of sand trout react with water and sunlight to create the spice melange, which the sand plankton feed on. Meanwhile, sand trout metamorphosize into sand worms, which eat the sand plankton and guard the spice. The sand worms are truly massive, growing up to over a mile long. <sighs> Lightning from static electricity flashes around them. Nonetheless, the Fremen have mastered a means to ride them, which makes the sandworms even more awesome. If you're ever on Arrakis, walk without rhythm and it won't attract the worm. By the way, find someone who looks at you the way Stilgar looks at Paul on a sandworm. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.